It's been a little while since we have a Cadillac video, so let's have a Cadillac video. Well, the recent issue I've been having with this Cadillac is the battery is giving me problems. So if you remember in a couple of videos back, um, I got the generator rebuilt and fixed, and that was awesome. And um, up to that point, I never really had any kind of issues with the battery was starting. I mean, I could let it sit for months, and have no issues at all a couple eh, I'd probably say three or four months ago I went to start the car I had to jump it I'm like well maybe just sat for too long ran it and then like two days later I was like let's go drive it again and it was completely dead so the issue that I had before was this window switch was sticking and one of the contacts inside had melted causing a draw on the battery which killed the battery and I think it did it enough that it ended up killing the battery completely. We will see what ends up happening, but I know this battery is probably five or six years old. I've had it since I've had the car. So we'll take it out and we'll see what what kind of date it has on it. A uh, couple observations. This uh, battery hold down clamp that I got off of eBay, which was supposed to be painted obviously isn't doing that great which kind of makes me mad considering what I paid for it but anyway we'll get this battery out I have to remove the little hose that connects the uh, blower motor to the uh, to the heater box but then it should just come well I say it should come right out it's a huge battery and they almost never fit in 57 they move the battery up here very smart idea but we'll get it out and we'll see what it looks like Alright, here is the battery. It has a sticker of M6, which uh, that probably means it's only three years old, but something I am kind of concerned about is there is water coming out of here, and it was like that before. It's still, still in there. It was like that before I pulled it. There's water in all the holes, so that's good. Now this battery, I feel like it's bigger than the one I bought. Let's go get it and see. Here's the difference between the batteries. It's about an inch taller. So this one's a 3EE and that one's a 3ET. Um, basically they're for farm and commercials like tractors and stuff I remember buying this battery because it wasn't much more for you know a few more uh, CCAs this one's 500 this one's 400 it's what I got we'll put it in make sure it fits I'm gonna keep this for now though because I want to put it up to my charger and just see if it was I know I know it will take a charge I just don't think it will hold a charge so we're just gonna have to throw it with the charger and see what happens by tomorrow. Two observations about this battery. It's been leaking water and it looks like maybe battery acid and then that's caught up underneath the um, the hold down bracket but I mean that's not that big of a deal but something weird which I'm totally surprised at is I put the the multimeter on it it says 11.4 which isn't bad for a battery that's been sitting for a while I just tried it with it in the car. You turn the key and everything goes dead. So I'm thinking there's a possibility that this battery is bad because it won't take a load. So you put a load on it to turn the engine over and nothing happens. So I'm going to leave it on the charger overnight. We'll see what it looks like in the morning. So here, here on this battery, which is the replacement one, we have about 12 and a half, which is about right. I think it's a bad battery, but... I mean, batteries should last longer than three years if they're not driven regularly. Maybe the switch killed it. I don't know. We'll put it in, and then we'll test for a draw. And then if we don't have one, we should be good. No 
Now what you can do to test for a battery draw is you can switch your multimeter to DC amps, switch your red lead over to this side, and then what you're going to do is kind of make a bridge in between your negative battery cable and the negative post. And when you do that, let's see if I can do it with one hand, and you have a draw, you'll see amps on the multimeter. Now I don't, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe mess with the window switch and see if the uh, multimeter will go up, and then that will kind of show you guys what the draw is supposed to look like. actually run the window off of that. I'm sure you guys saw some numbers. With my old battery, I'd come in here, the light would turn on, I'd turn the key and it would just go Bleh. See, I wouldn't even get the lights on the dash. <laughs> it fires right up. That's amazing. I didn't even put the choke on. That's pretty good. Another thing we'll probably do in a future episode is I want to put seatbelts in the car since I have a kid. Well, seatbelts are usually a good thing, right? We love seatbelts, so we'll have to figure that out when the time comes. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to take this seat out and switch it out for a six-way uh, adjustable seat. Now, um, Cadillac, you could get either a standard seat, you could get a two-way power seat, front and back, and then you get a six-way, which is up, down, front and back, and then it tilts side to side. Uh, my parts car, which recently went away, I finally got all the parts off if I needed, so I got rid of it. Um, that has a six-way seat, and here in this video, we're going to try to get that piece of junk working again and see what we can make happen with that. In my quest to add all of the power options to my Cadillac, uh, up next is going to be the six-way power seat. So right now, my Cadillac has a seat that goes forward and back, but this seat goes up, down, forward, back, and also tilts side to side. As you can see, it's been in my parts Cadillac for a long time. Remember, this car was in a field for since 1970-something, and so as you can tell, there's all kinds of nasties all over this thing. It's probably rusted solid. It probably doesn't work. It has a bunch of wires that are broken. But here's the key. is This is the plug for that master switch that moves everything up and down. So uh, the job for today is going to be clean everything up as much as possible, put power to it, and see what I can get to move and what won't. I mean, look at this. I don't have much faith in it at all. This is just nasty, nasty. All this stuff inside of here has been sitting outside for so long. Who knows if any of these connections are any good. So we'll get to working on it. We'll get to cleaning it up and even see. I mean, this is the motor. Who knows if that works? <laughs> Who knows about any of this stuff? So I've repaired all of the broken wires that I could see and fixed all of the, well cleaned up all the connections that I can see. Uh, there's a couple relay connections that were broken and then um, a few wires by the motor. Here is the switch. It's kind of a cool looking switch actually. So it's six way so you can go forward, backwards, or it can not work. You can go up you can go down and you can tilt like that. So the problem I'm having is it doesn't want to, these little clips right here, they don't want to keep it where it needs to be. I'm hoping that once it gets sandwiched in between the seat and all that other stuff, it'll work a little bit better, but uh, we might have to, you know, figure out something else. But this is this is how it came. This is the clips are supposed to be in it. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I've got this battery to uh, the seat basically I'm going to ground to that part of the um, track and then that red wire I'm going to put to positive on the battery. I'm going to use jumper cables 
just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to plug this switch in and then see what happens, if anything happens. I don't think anything will happen. It's been a lot of years since the seat has even gotten. So I have my battery hooked up. Um, power wires to positive, negative is to ground, and you know what? I'm getting power at this relay. You see that? If it wants to. Anyway, I can't see what I'm doing. I get power there. I also get power at the seat switch. I really think the issue is the seat switch. I don't I don't know if I have another one. I don't think I do. I'm going to go look really quick, but I think the problem is the seat switch is maybe dirty inside, needs to be taken apart. I'm not really sure how these work. So we'll take it apart and we'll see you know what it looks like inside and then from there we can move on to other things. I'm thinking I might just jumper wire some of this stuff and see if that does anything. Uh, bypass the seat switch completely for now. We'll see. Alright, we have made some progress. So, after uh, changing up a few things, I grounded the motor instead of wherever I had the ground before, and I also cleaned this relay. Now, we can get some things to move. So, this switch... The switch, I can push it down and it will move. I can push it over and it will move. Up and it will move. And I think it's already at its limit on this other way, maybe. I don't know, the switch is kind of janky, but um, the problem I'm getting is this, um, this threaded rod right here is just spinning freely. And if you look at the way this is designed, there's three little boxes that are hooked up to three different things on this seat. So either all three are completely stripped out and the motor is just spinning, or these aren't getting power or they're not grounded well enough to work. What I think happens, I could be completely wrong, so don't, don't uh, quote me on this, what I think happens is this spins regardless, in one direction or the other based on the switch, and then the switch then sends 12 volts to these things. I've already um, verified with the test light that these do get power, but they're also grounded here at the bottom, which you can see is probably really dirty and really corroded. Um, I think what happens when these get power is they, they clamp down on this threaded rod, and then this one's attached to these levers, this one's attached to these levers, and then this one is attached just to the bar by itself. So one of these moves the seat up and up and down, one of them moves the seat tilted, one of them moves the seat, you know, forward and back. Uh, I can't get them to do anything. I'm going to try to take them apart and see if I can't fix them or reground them or or something. So, uh, just one step at a time, but we do have a working motor and a good working relay, plus power getting to these things. So I'm thinking these things are the last things on the list. Alright, so I have one of these solenoids apart, and inside you will find a plunger like this. Basically, it just rests in there, and what it does is when the solenoid is activated, it magnetizes and it pushes this down. And what that does is that pushes that ball bearing down there into this screw on the bottom, and then activates the correct part of the seat based on what you click on the button. So, I have done some research online, and people have told me that um, the problem that you're going to have is they have this, basically it sits like this inside the solenoid. You can kind of see how this is off to one side, so it would sit like this inside. And it pretty much rides in there and makes sure that the plunger doesn't continue pushing down on the ball. But honestly, I have read online that you can take these springs out and these will start working again better than before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out as many as I can. I don't know if I can get to that one. It's kind of stuck. But um, I've been able to get this to move. Let's see if I can get it on camera. I might need to hold it. I'm hoping with the... Let me put you on the tripod.
As I said before, I've been able to get this to move. Let's like pretend this has the cover on it, right? So it doesn't push up and the cover holds it down. See, now the seat's moving forward. It never did that before. So I'm hoping that can't get it to move backwards. Something, this, my switch sucks, so I'm hoping that if I do that on all of the, uh, if I do that on all these solenoids, that they will start to work. That would be awesome. I can't do this with any three hands. See? See how I got it to move? Never did that before. So I'm going to take all these little springs and deals out of the other solenoids and then we'll test it all out. I have a little bit of extra time at the end of the day. I figure I'll take it out. Uh, I don't know, clean the top, clean the windows, maybe get rid of all this junk that I have all over the, uh, the inside of the car. But you know it's running, running really well. Uh, the, my exhaust leak came back. You can hear it. It was worth a try with the gaskets. I think eventually I'm just gonna have to get, uh, have to get new manifolds or used manifolds and plane them or whatever. But something interesting. Check this out. This Cadillac is pretty much as long as that pickup truck. It might just be longer if I backed it up all the way. But I'll give her a little bath. Because I can. Get all the doors open, air her out, that kind of thing. Let her run, warm up. I want to show you guys some really cool stuff that I've gotten from viewers in the last year. Um, I want to say thank Robert, I want to thank Mark, and I'm sorry I forget the guy who sent me this. But you know who you are because you're the one who sent me a Rat Rod magazine. Anyway, so a couple cool things. So in this Rat Rod magazine there is a story on the pistons and paint show that I went to a couple years ago with the caddy and it turns out the caddy was in the, in the uh the caddy got in the magazine now the cool part is see those reverse lights yeah they work so this is me backing up uh if you guys watch resto dan that's his impala right there that was about two years ago um but again i just been so busy i haven't been able to make a video on any of this kind of stuff but Hey, that's cool. I mean, I'd, I don't get any money for it, but my car's in a magazine, so there you go. Anyway, now we have this uh, really cool AutoCAD drawings that are done by a YouTube viewer. Uh, the finished product is actually hanging in my house, so it shows how much I like. I like these, but he drew this stuff on his computer. And he sent me his some of his rough drafts, but some of his final, you know, final copies. So, super cool. And then last but not least, and I have this Hot Rod um, magazine from February of 1956. So, the cool part about this, let's see if I can find it, there we go. Besides all the cool vintage ads and all that other kind of stuff, is that there's a pretty much a whole three page article about the new motor and the Eldorado uh, engine, which my car does have. And it's all new for 56, so... And it talks about the new transmission, talks about all that other kind of stuff, so... So here's the graph on the standard motor versus the, uh... Versus the, uh... Eldorado. So here's... Here's the torque. So, top torque at 3600 RPM. According to this, is 400. I don't know about that. And then according to the horsepower, it's 305 at like 4,500 RPM. It's in the magazine, so I believe it if, if you want to. But it has all the cutouts of all the, you know, all this other kind of stuff. Something, let's go to 58. That's where it continues. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff in this magazine. I'm sure you guys will see something that you really like anyway. 57 and 58. Well, anyway, it talks about the you can get the dual quads and use a pair of Buick Strongbergs instead 
or you can use smaller ones, make four of them. Anyway, super cool, but the other cool part about this is just all the, the gimmicky stuff that you can get. And back in the day, this was ev what ev anybody had. That's all you had was this. There was no internet. And this is how you got your knowledge besides doing it, is you read magazines. So I wanted to show that stuff to you guys. I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, people really do love the car, and I don't ever plan on getting rid of it. I mean, the only way I get rid of it is somebody offering me an insane amount of money, which actually has happened before. So, But I'm not planning it on this one. So.